Hello, today I would like to show you something really, really interesting and something that you should know how to connect two computers using serial cable to access the internet and send the TCP IP data. We are going to send this TCP IP packets through a PPP point to point link by using the RS232 serial connection. Why this is extremely important thing to know if you are ever into radio communication and that's the reason because the serial can be emulated by a lot of different devices starting from military radios for a industrial ARS-232 radio packet modems. You can have a device that looks like this, got a 25 watts amplifier and the antenna, and it's going to have this type of uh, connector and you can hook up computer to one end. On other end, you've got the same device, you hook up computer and it's going to create this wireless serial link. Of course, they are also devices that convert this to a industrial serial that can have a much greater distance. You can have uh, devices that are creating a serial link out of a lasers. So there is a lot of interesting thing that you can play with. Of course, the HF modems are also an option. But yeah, everything go to uh, extremely simple principles. And if you will be able to make it with uh, this simple cable, then you've got a lot of possibilities. So what is a new modem cable? and what's the difference between a standard cable that you connect to your actual modem. The new modem cable is crossing the connection between transmit and receive. So transmit pins from one computer are going to be directly connected to the receive and the transmit from another computer will be directly crossed connected to the receive on the other end. And yeah, that's the basic principle. Here I've got a USB to RS-232 serial adapter. Most likely inside we've got a FTDI chip that you can use either a hardware or USB for a newer device. We are going to connect our cable with a new modem. There is no distinguish which one. And I'm going to hook it up to the to our USB. And here I write down the ID for the communication port. And this is the AP that we are going to use on that computer. Here I'm going to use COM1 and this is the IP that can be any IP address. Here we are going to use a hardware port without any adapters. Okay. And we are going to make our connection. First of all, we are going to install a virtual modem and we are going to make this by going to the, but no, first let's take a look here. That computer do not have a internet access. As you can see, the only network card is disabled and here the network card is enabled and it's currently connected to the internet. I'm going to control panel and we are going to add 
a new hardware exactly the same thing we are going to do on the other unit add new hardware on both of these windows we are going to hit next and next this device does not exist this is a virtual device so we are going to go that yeah we already connected this we go to the bottom and add new hardware device it won't be on that list because it does not exist here we are going to install manually we are going to hit next we go to the modems we hit next we are going to select do not detect hit next and here the first device communication cable between two computers that's what we need we've got a question which port should we use for that i've got the com1 and that's what i'm going to select and it's installing exactly the same thing on the server sorry we've got here we go to the bottom add new hardware install manually modems next do not detect next communication between two computers next com5 in my case and it's installing here we are ready here we are going to wait a second and it's done we go to the network connection and first we are going to take care of the server i'm going to hit create new connection we are going to hit next set up advanced connection hit next accept incoming connections next what kind of device this is our virtual modem com5 we are going to hit next i'm going to select do not allow uh, we can we can allow that here we should select the guest and we are going to hit next here we've got the tcp ip stack configuration protocol we go to the properties here we can specific the ip address in our cases we decide we are going to put a free here and we are going from 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 zero or maybe i think the zero does the zero should be allow because zero most likely is uh, yeah now let's go from zero okay i'm going to hit okay and we're going to hit next and finish we are going to see that here we've got a new device i'm going to hit properties users and i'm going to make sure that all the devices that I are, are directly connected are going to bypass and the security and that's all here we are going to go to the network connections create new connection we hit next advanced connection next connect directly to another computer next this is our guest so that's what i'm going to select we are going to hit next computer name that's just only going to be a name so i can call it a mail server next here i'm selecting the communication cable between two computers this is the null modem device that we just install next and it's ready here I'm going to put a guest as username and I'm going to hit connect. And now these two devices are going to connect together. 
here we can see that we have a dial-in connected, dial-in connection. Here we've got information that we are connected to the mail server. What can we do right now? We can go and click to that icon and as you can see here, you can see the compression for our, our link, bytes that are transfer, the speed. If we go to the details, we are going to see the server IP address, 3.1, which is that IP, client IP, which is this IP. So we make everything perfect. We can open our command line and I'm going to open this same window here. So we will be able to observe how our packages are working. Let me go like this and we are going to ping that server. I'm going to hit enter and we are going to see that data are being transmitted and we've got a response. So we can, for example, send ourselves an email using this link. And here I've got a email client. This device got a mail server. Here we are going to get an error because it's going to try to connect to the mail server using the radio and then my previous communication configuration that I've got. So it's going to fail. I'm going to go to the accounts, RS232. This is uh, my account that I've got. And here on the servers, I'm just going to put the IP address of that server. Okay. And that's going to allow you to use any service that is on this unit. If this unit is a mail server, you can access by that IP address. And here I'm going to receive our RS232 mail. And we've got a message that we've got no new mail. So we are going to create one. test via RS-232. And we are going to type uh, working good and we are going to send it. And now it's going to be, I think I might forget to change. Yeah, it won't work. I, I select wrong account. This is a Motorola have to go to the RS-232. Not good. Okay. And now it's going to work. It's sent. I go to the inbox. Send receive. And I'm going to receive from RS-232. And yeah, we already know the Motorola is not connected. It's going to fail. We know that. We know that. RS-232 receiving one email. And here is our email. So this is how you can access services. But what if you would like to access the internet? Here I've got installed a proxy application called the CC proxy. This is a application that we are going to forward our packets to the internet and send it back. The only thing you need to do is that you are going to open your web browser because if we open a CMD here and ping, I'm going to ping the Google as you can see it fail. 
but if we go to the preferences to the network tab settings and here we are going to set up the proxy this is the IP address where the proxy is running is this a correct port the SOX5 proxy yes that's a correct port and I'm going to make sure that we are performed the DNS queries and that's all we are going to have an internet try again and look at this we are accessing the internet by using a serial cable is not that beautiful okay so as you can see we were able to make a connection but it wasn't blazing fast let's try to increase that or let's make a little bit of a speed test let's connect to the http server on that machine just like that and let's copy some file over this is a around one megabyte file and we are going to just copy that over http i believe that's a correct folder try to refresh and we can see our file and I'm going to download it and here we are going to see the speed and it's saying it's going to take around five minutes which we are not going to we are not going to wait that let's make it faster so for disconnect go to the properties configure and here we can select speed but we cannot use any value we need to use a value that is supported by both computers and this is the highest that unit can go and we are going to go for it and select the same value here and now we are going to be like five times faster over 100 kilobits i'm going to download that one more time and now it's going to take a one minute to download which is a significant improvement and we are going to make it over a serial connection okay so we don't have to wait for it because there is no reason we can check the wikipedia once again and this time should be much more faster and as you can see it's going to be much much more faster everything over serial connection so this is how it looks like this is how you can connect two computers and provide a tcp ip connection over a serial cable thank you very much for watching i hope you find that interesting see you next time and bye bye